About half a dozen sellers of a coffee powder marketed as a weight loss product have been told to close up shop or they could face prosecution after the brew was found to contain potentially dangerous levels of an amphetamine-like substance. And Medsafe is warning consumers to ditch any supplies of Alavacity Elevate Smart Coffee version number three in the powder form. It is the second time this week that the watchdogs issued a serious warning about products masquerading as medicines making unsubstantiated therapeutic claims with no proof and with the risk of significant side effects. But getting them off the market can be tough. First off, MedSafe compliance manager Derek Fitzgerald explains what's wrong with the coffee brew. This coffee contains a Class C control drug. Um, the, the particular control drug that's in there um, occurs in very small amounts in natural coffee, but these products have been fortified, if you like. And so um, a, a therapeutic claim is being made for them. So people shouldn't take them um, and they should return them to the supplier. A couple of things there. What's the thera- therapeutic claim that they're making? Okay, so they're they're saying things like um, for weight loss or for weight management or to improve mood, that type of thing, you know, fairly soft um, therapeutic claims, but they're definitely therapeutic claims and it's clear that they're they're using those therapeutic claims to market the product over and above ordinary coffee. And so this Class C drug, what is it? Is it an amphetamine and what, what could it do? Yes, it's like a it's like an amphetamine um, uh, type of substance, and and it has adverse reactions, of possibly agitation and psychological effects, and cardiovascular effects like increased heart rate and and blood pressure, that type of thing. So, have you had or have there been adverse um, events reported as a consequence of this product? We haven't had any reported at the present time. Um, so, um, there there is definitely the possibility that. Um, you know, someone has suffered from this, but we haven't had any reported at the present time, no. How much of this stuff is circulating and how come it's available on the market? We're not sure. It's been sold online. And so um, the interesting thing is that, that, that people in New Zealand are, are setting up websites and selling it, but they don't actually have the product. The product is being shipped directly to the customers from probably the US. So we, we've taken action with um, six um, different distributors in New Zealand, given them warnings and told them that they're breaking the law and what the penalty could possibly be. And um, they, they have, um, as far as we are aware at the present time, are complying with that and have shut down on that particular part of their business. So potentially, though, could people be ordering this as individuals off uh, online from other countries and just um, shipping it to themselves for use? They could do. We um, don't recommend that at all um, because of the hazards involved. And people just have to remember that, that people selling these products online, they don't care about your health or or things like that. They might pretend to care about your health or your well-being. They're just in it for making money. So there's no controls over these products as, as they come into the country. If they come in in the post and it looks like a pot of coffee, um, it, it, it's, you know, it could go through. So um, we um, recommend that people do not um, buy this. And, and that applies to a whole load of um, therapeutic-like or therapeutic products that might be offered online and come in from overseas. That's a bit of a problem, though, isn't it, Derek? Because, well, that's really hard to stop. Yeah, we we um, for those products that that are that, that definitely do look like medicines, you know, tablets and capsules and creams and ointments and that type of thing. Um, we have an arrangement with customs, and they are present at the border, and, and they go through and they refer um, things that look like medicines to MedSafe. So we probably um, detect around right about thousand, twelve hundred packages a year that are coming through that contain. Uh, maybe prescription medicines, for instance, or controlled drugs, and um, they are they are stopped at the border, and um, the person they are consigned to has to have a good excuse, like for instance, um, a prescription from their doctor before we'll release them. So th- there is a mechanism there that will stop some products from entering the country. That's for sure. Okay, so the six operators that have been selling this stuff, they've been issued with a formal warning, have they? Yes, that's correct. And what happens if they don't stop? Charges follow. Um, yeah, we, we may well um, uh, gather further evidence on their activities and um, 
uh, if appropriate, we can go ahead with the prosecution. We have um, quite strong um, powers to um, obtain evidence, for instance, from computers and cell phones and all sorts of things. So we um, can um, uh, ob- obtain information on, on what they're doing and present that as, as, a, as a case to a court. Because I'm wondering just how efficiently the rules and regulations are working. Because earlier in the week, there was another product, wasn't there, Arthrim, which makes claims that it's um, great for joints, I think it was. And that's been withdrawn from the market in exchange for MedSafe dropping legal action against the company. So uh, are the regulations working here? Yeah, it it sometimes takes a long time to um, move something through the courts and... um, that, that was the case with Arthrum. Um, Arthrum was a, a similar product which they made um, fairly strong therapeutic claims for. And also that particular product proved to be um, a problem with respect to liver toxicity. So instead of going through the, continuing to go through the, the court process, we decided to bring it to an end and then stop um, supply. But, but supply of that product um, probably diminished to almost negligible amounts um, last year or even maybe the year before. But basically you were forced to do a deal with them, right? Because the company was warned, what, first in 2016, and this is was still, still going on now. So was there no way to just order them to stop selling it and then you were clogged up in the court, forced to do to barter with them in order to get what you thought was a dangerous product off the shelf? What, what we have in the background is uh, an up, upgrade to the Medicines Act, which will provide much better mechanisms to take action other than uh, prosecuting through the courts. So we're, we're looking forward to that eventuating and uh, going through Parliament, and that will provide us with much more modern um, uh, machinery, if you like, to be able to quickly um, take action and more effective action without having to wait for the court system to progress. So how common is it to have these, well, they're therapeutic, what should we call them? They're not medicines, that's the whole point. They're, mm. they're, they're masquerading as medicines by making false claims about what they can do. I mean, how, how, common, how common is the snake oil out there? Uh, it's more common than we would like. Um, most um, organisations, um, once warned, stopped doing what they were doing, and, and, and that was the original approach back in 2016 with the Promisia company. Um, most organisations will understand it. Quite a lot in that particular area don't realise that they're breaking the law. Some some do, um, and they will stop their um, advertising and supply. Um, so, so there are only very few that really um, go through to the... Um, the, the process where we find that we have to prosecute them. So, so we're we're sort of working on these sort of products all the time and issuing warning letters really quite regularly to companies. <clears throat> so, in summary, these two products that we've been talking about today, if you've got them on the shelf at home, what bin them? Yes, yes, um, or re- return them to the relevant companies for credit. But certainly, uh, we advise um, don't take them. And if people have felt unwell whilst taking them, they should see their doctor. And that was MedSafe Compliance Manager Derek Fitzgerald.